Hello friends. Today we are going to discuss in this session about ecological factors that too about the climatic factors. In an ecosystem, a living organism is influenced by a number of factors and forces. These factors are known as eco-factors or ecological factors. These include light, temperature, soil, water, etc. Some of the major ecological factors that constitute the environment of an organism are climatic factors, edaphic factors, topographic factors, biotic factors, limiting factors. In this session today, we are going to learn about climatic and temperature as a, a, a climatic factors, especially that to lighten temperature. Climatic factors or aerial factors could be light, temperature, water, rainfall, humidity, and wind, that is atmospheric gases. Let us deal with the first climatic factor that we are going to learn in this session, that is light. Light plays an important role in the species composition and development of vegetation. It is abundantly received on the surface of earth and on an average approximately only 2 to 3 percent of this incident solar light or solar energy is used in primary productivity. Primary productivity refers to the total produce by the green organisms or those organisms which can trap sunlight or chemical energy and produce organic molecules like carbohydrates. Light intensity shows special variations due to various factors like atmospheric water layer, particles dispersed in the air, etc. Further, the vegetation of an area may also affect the light intensity. In deep shade under trees or under water, light becomes limiting factor below which Photosynthesis is not sufficient for effective growth. So, depending upon the penetration of lights, oceans are divided into three major zones. That is euphotic zone, which is up to 50 meters depth into the water body or ocean. Dysphotic zone, about 80 to 200 meters depth in the ocean. And aphotic zone, below 200 meters depth in the ocean. So this is where the light penetrates and this is where you usually find a lot of vegetation or uh, biotic factors here. What is the effect of light on the plants or how are the plants affected by the light? Light plays a very vital role directly or indirectly in regulating the growth that is the structure, form, size, metabolism, development and distribution of plants. The plants are influenced by light in the following ways. We are going to deal with each and every one here. Effect on chlorophyll synthesis. The synthesis of chlorophyll in green plants can take place only in the presence of light. It is seen that if a coprophyllous plant is kept in prolonged darkness, the chlorophyll amount practically disappears. Then, when you take light as a climatic factor, you have to learn about the three major dimensions of light which affect the growth of the plant. That is, the duration of light that is called as a photo period. We learn about that in the later points. Quality of light, that is the distribution, and the quantity of light, that is the intensity. So the duration affects the flowering of the plant or dormancy of the seed. The light quality or distribution affects the stem extension and flowering. And light quantity or intensity affects the root and shoot growth, branching, etc. So you can say that light as a climatic factor has three dimensions. That is duration, quality and quantity. Now, effect, of num of, uh, effect on the number and position of the chloroplasts. 
light has marked effect on the number and position of chloroplasts, the chlorophyll bearing organelle. The upper surface of leaves, which receive maximum sunlight, has the largest number of chloroplasts arranged in line with the direction of light. So, this is since these upper surfaces of leaves are exposed to the sunlight, they have a lot of or large number of chloroplasts. On the other hand, the leaves of the plants which are in the shade have few chloroplasts and they are arranged at right angles to the light rays, thus increasing the surface of absorption. Then how do they affect the rate of photosynthesis? Light affects the rate of photosynthesis, which is nothing but a process of conversion of solar energy into chemical energy, that too in the presence of chlorophyll, which is subsequently used for the preparation of carbohydrate from carbon dioxide and water. So from the above statement, we can understand that light is highly essential for photosynthesis. The rate of photosynthesis is slower at lower intensity and it increases linearly with increasing light intensity up to a particular point. This is known as saturation point. And after attaining this point, it remains constant. The intensity of light at which the plants no longer carry photosynthesis or when photosynthesis balances respiration is called as compensation intensity. Then the effect on respiration. In plants, respiration is a process of the oxidation of carbohydrate, which is produced during photosynthesis into carbon dioxide and water. According to Kelvin, the rate of respiration increases at higher light intensity and it decreases at lower light intensity. Transpiration is also affected by light. The rise in atmospheric temperature, which is indirectly due to the conversion of solar energy or solar radiation into heat, increases the rate of transpiration. So here it is indirect effect. The process of opening of stomata, which depend upon light, leading to loss of water from the aerial surface of the plant is known as transpiration. Here also you have many uh, plants which are photoactive and some of them are scotoactive, like for example desert plants. Photoactive plants, here the stomata open during the light uh, or sunlight or during the daytime. And in desert plants, where it is very, very high light intensity is given to the plants or received by the plants, here, in order to save water, in order to control transpiration, there the stomata open only during the night, that is cotoactive. Then sunlight also influences the production of hormones. Light inhibits the synthesis of auxins or growth hormones in plants as a result of which the shape and size of the plants get modified. You will see that, for example, if a plant is continuously kept in the dark, it becomes pale in color. It does not have its vibrant green color. Then the plants which are kept in the windowsill usually grow towards the light, that is grow out of the windowsill. This is called as phototrophic movements or they show movements or they show growth towards the sunlight. So you can say that growth and development, size and shape of the plants are influenced by the amount of sunlight they receive. Effect on development of flowers, fruit and vegetative parts. The intensity of light largely influences the growth and development of flowers, fruits and vegetative parts of the plants. Light of higher intensity favors development of flowers fruits and seeds, but light of lower intensity promotes the development of vegetative parts. Here you can understand that lights of higher intensity is an unfavorable condition. So usually a plant goes for reproduction during the unfavorable condition. Then effect on formation of anthocyanin pigment. Intense light helps in the formation of anthocyanin pigments in plants. That is why in alpine regions, you have, you can see beautiful flowers containing various anthocyanin pigments. 
effect on movement. The effect on sunlight in modulating the movement of plants is called as phototropism or heliotropism. The elongation of stem towards light is known as positive phototropism and the movements of roots away from light towards the soil or gravity is known as negative phototropism. Then the leaves grow transversely to light. Effect on photoperiodism. The response of plants to the relative length of the day, <coughs> excuse me, known as photoperiod is known as photoperiodism. According to these, to the response of plants to the length of the photoperiod, the plants have been classified into three groups. Long day plants, plants which bloom when the light duration is more than 12 hours per day. Example, radish, potato, spinach, etc. Short day plants, plants which bloom when the light duration is lesser than 12 hours per day, that is cereals, tobacco, cosmos, dahlia, etc. And day neutral plants, that is the plants which show little response to the length of the day light, that is cotton, balsam, tomato, etc. So this is a picture representing the uh, categories of plants according to their photo periods. For the short day plant will be receiving, even if it is receiving less amount of water, uh, less amount of light, it is able to produce the flowers. Long day plants need a lot of daylight more than 12 hours and day neutral plant can uh, are not uh, affected by the duration of light they receive. Light can be called as one of the reasons for distribution of plants on earth. You can see that tropical forests are found in the areas where light intensity is more, duration of light is more. So you can see that the green colored structure here in this particular diagram or map, you can see that these are all occupied by tropical and subtropical kinds of forests. So savannas, chaparals, temperate uh, perennials, grasslands, all these things are found according to the light that they receive. So this is the reason for, that is the light is the reason for the distribution of plants on earth. Now, effect of light on seed germination. The germination of seeds is largely influenced by light. In most of the plants, the red light induces seed germination. In some plants, blue light promotes the germination. And in some, in some cases, far red light is seen to inhibit the seed germination. Effect on distribution of plants. The duration and intensity of light plays an important role in determining the distribution of plants. Hence, the vegetation of different geographical regions are different from one another. What you find in India may not be found in America or UK or Australia because the conditions are all different. Effect on photomorphogenesis. The development of plants in seedling stage is controlled by light. The seedlings present in dark conditions are non-green and highly elongated with poorly developed root system and practically no foliage. Whereas an exposure to the, uh, of these dark grown seedlings to light makes them normal. So if you want a plant to grow normally, it has to receive proper sunlight or source of light. Now, this is about the first uh, factor of climatic factor that is the light. Now next factor is temperature. Temperature is a measurement of the degree of heat. Light, light heat is a form of energy. The radiant energy received from sun, sun is converted into heat energy. Heat is measured in calories and the temperature at which physiological processes are at their maximum efficiency is called as optimum temperature. So all living beings have an optimum temperature. The minimum, optimum and maximum temperatures are called cardinal temperatures. The cardinal temperature varies from species to species and in some, in, in, in some cases in the same individual from part to part. The distribution of plants, animals are also influenced by temperature. Ecological, uh, ecologically, plants are based on temperatures into four major categories. 
megatherms, mesotherms, microtherms, and hecistotherms. Megatherms, the plants which live in high temperature throughout the year are called as megatherms. These are found in equatorial and tropical rainforests. Mesotherms, plants living in high temperature of summer, alternating with low temperature of winter are called as mesotherms. They are found in deciduous forests of tropical and subtropical region. Microtherms, plants which live in extremely low temperature are called as microtherms. It includes plants of temperate and higher high altitudes up to 12,000 feet of tropical and subtropical regions. These regions are dominated by mixed coniferous forests. Hecistotherms. It includes plants of Arctic and Alpine regions above 16,000 feet in tropics and 12,000 feet in temperate regions with very low temperatures. Alpine vegetation prevails in such locality. Now, just like light, even temperature has its effect on the growth of plants. It affects the structure, physiology, growth, distribution of plants uh, in a very, very major way. First, let us see the effect on cell and protoplasm. In the extremely low temperature, the protoplasm may be frozen to ice. On the other hand, in extremely high temperature, all the proteins may coagulate and the cell might disintegrate or cell might be destroyed. Effect on metabolism. In the presence of different enzymes, various metabolic activities of in the living organisms are carried out. With a slight increase in temperature, the metabolic activities also may increase. However, metabolic rate decreases when there is higher increase in temperature. Finally, all activities or metabolism, uh, metabolic activities are completely cut down when higher temperatures are reached where the enzymes become non-functional. Effect on respiration. The rate of respiration increases with the rise of temperature. It is maximum at optimum temperature, but it decreases rapidly above optimal temperature. Effect on development. The development of plants is influenced by temperature. Effect on growth. Seedlings of several plants exhibit the elongation of hypocotyl if there is proper temperature given. Effect of transpiration in plants. Transpiration is a process of loss of water from the aerial surface of plants. The rate of transpiration increases with increase in atmospheric temperature and vice versa. High rate of transpiration also increases the rate of absorption of water from the soil. Then germination of seed. Temperature also affects the germination of seed. Every seed has optimal temperature. The seed cannot grow below or above this temperature. Photosynthesis. Photosynthesis occurs over a wide range of temperatures. In some desert plants, it can continue even at 80 degrees centigrade. Most of the algae require lower temperature range for photosynthesis. The optimum temperature for it for most of the plants is 25 to 35 degrees centigrade. Photosynthesis is stopped at 40 degrees centigrade in temperate plants and at 50 degrees centigrade in tropical plants. The general distribution of plants depending upon the temperature, that is temperature and moisture determine the general distribution of vegetation. Different belts of vegetation occur between equator and poles. Vegetation is primarily determined by heat, thus plants which grow in a hot climate cannot grow in a cold climate and vice versa. That is why same crops are not cultivated in all regions of the world. Different crops are cultivated in different regions of the world. Temperature also makes the spread of diseases possible. When temperature and humidity are high, this affects the spreading of plant diseases. 
Low temperatures along with high humidity favors attack of rust, damping of seedling blight, foot rot and root rot. These are all the effects of temperature and uh, uh, light as climatic factors on the growth and development of plants. Thank you.